Hello. Thank you for allowing me to present at the WEX 6 conference. My name is Kareen Sandy, and I am the department chair for the Computer Information Systems Program at Whatcom Community College. The name of my presentation is Implementing Security Education at a Small Community College. Whatcom Community College is located in Bellingham, Washington, close to the Canadian border. The Com Computer Information Systems Program at Whatcom Community College is pretty small. We have two faculty, full-time faculty, and one part-time faculty. Currently, our degree has one network security course in it, Network Security 1. This course is based on the CompTIA Security Plus objectives. Some of the issues about this course include the fact that not all students that receive a CIS degree are required to take this course. We don't have a course that everybody um, has to take. Um, also, uh, the course needs a real world component brought into it. It's too textbook based. After I attended WEX 5, when I came back to Bellingham, I decided that I would gain some practical experience in the field. So I approached an organization in Whatcom County, a nonprofit organization, and offered to do a security audit for them. Uh, the project turned out to be more than I expected. Um, they needed a lot of help with other things besides their security. This organization had 17 machines, um, a mix of Macintoshes and PCs. The PCs were running Windows 95, 98, XP Home, and XP Professional. They had no IT person on staff. They had an IT consultant that they would bring in when they had a problem. Uh, they didn't have any standardization. Uh, if, if they needed a new computer, somebody would just go out and buy it. Just before I got there, they had purchased a Windows 2003 server at the suggestion of the IT consultant, but he set it up as a workstation on the network. The network was a peer-to-peer -peer configuration. All of the hard drives of the machines were fully shared, so anybody on the network could access the hard drive to anybody else. Obviously, this led to some problems. They were having difficulty with lost connections, bottlenecks, duplicate IP addresses, multiple versions of something on several computers, that kind of thing. One computer that everybody was accessing had over 2,500 documents on it that everybody was using in the organization, and it had never been backed up. As a matter of fact, none of the machines had ever been backed up. Um, they did have an accounting machine, and they would periodically do a, a data backup to their a floppy, but they didn't have the software, the accounting software, they didn't have their serial number or anything, and I doubt whether they could have restored if they had to. So one of the things I did, I troubleshot some of their network problems. I also set up their Windows 2003 server with Active Directory and DNS, and I moved their database to the server so that it would be backed up on a nightly basis. And I instructed the IT consultant to upgrade all the machines, either the, the 95 machines to Windows 98 and the XP Home machines to XP Professional. XP Home does not allow you to log into a domain. So all the machines had to be capable of logging into a Windows domain. I also developed security policies for the organization using templates from SANS.org. And I provided training to the employees. Uh, some of the things I, I talked to them about was how to choose a complex password. I explained what we were doing and uh, why we were doing it. There were numerous pitfalls along the way. Um, one of the issues with this organization, since there was no centralized management of IT, the people felt that they could do whatever they wanted. So one person there brought in an access point and hooked it up. And as a matter of fact, I think he had three. And people were bringing in their uh, PDAs and their uh, notebook computers and 
using wireless access to get out on the internet and to access other machines on the network. Um, the management didn't quite seem to understand the problem with this until I did a demonstration. Um, this organization had a large public area and I brought my laptop with its wireless NIC uh, into the public area and I showed management how easy it was to get onto their network. They had an extensive database of individuals at this organization that had not been backed up and was not secured in any way. Also, their physical security, they had, uh, uh, well, one of the things they would do is if uh, their internet, they were having problems with their internet, their router and everything was accessible to everybody, so some, somebody would just go pull the plug on it, and nothing was uh, locked up anywhere. So some of the things I did, aside from fix a lot of their uh, network problems, I documented their network. I produced a diagram for them in uh, Visio. I solved some of their duplicate IP addressing problems. And um, I did a disaster recovery book, including step-by-step -step how to restore if uh, the building should burn down or something and they had to do have a brand new machine and restore to it. The IT consultant felt that since he had tapes that he was okay, but he had no idea what he would do if he had to reinstall a tape drive into a new machine if he could just restore. So I made two books. One book I gave to the organization and one book I kept for myself because I was doing a lot of technical support over the phone and I needed the map and so on. So out of this experience, I developed a case study for the students in Networking One, uh, Network Security One. At the beginning of the quarter, the students are presented with a document that lists all the known problems with this network. And that's about two pages long. And they're given a, a diagram. When the students get to Network Security One, they've already taken about half of the Cisco CCNA program, so they're pretty familiar with what I'm talking about. Um, as the students learn new aspects of information assurance through the quarter, they apply this to the case study. The case study is a quarter-long project. At the end of the quarter, the students are expected to produce a network diagram, security policy, identification of security weaknesses, and a plan for securing the network, including physical security, configurations, policies, documentation, and monitoring. Um, in other words, with the, the actual, this is an actual experience out in the world that I had, and I've translated this to a project for the students. So the students are, are expected to actually fix these problems instead of it being like just a textbook exercise. It's real. The Bellingham community is, uh, has a lot of different populations. And one of my goals has been to recruit women into IT. So this year, um, when I did my uh, recruitment speeches. I also incorporated information security topics into that. I address the Turning Point classes here every quarter. Turning Point is a program for displaced homemakers who are either, they either have to return to school or get a job. And so I usually do, an, I address them, I talk about the program, and this year I talked about the information security as a potential career and for those that weren't interested in going into computers, I discussed uh, the dangers of the internet and some of the things they should be concerned about. Many of these women are parents and they're not really uh, familiar with their computer. And so I always get a lot of questions at, at these uh, events. The Road Less Gravel is a, an event that's put on once a year in Bellingham and it's to recruit women into non-traditional fields and I always address um, that too and my goal there is to recruit women into IT. This year I highlighted the information security aspects of IT. I brought up the uh, Internet Storm Center from SANS.org 
and show them uh, the kinds of things that were happening on the internet and the scissor site and other sites just to show them that security has become a big issue now. We also received a small grant to recruit people into non-traditional programs and my portion of the grant went to recruiting women into IT. So we set up uh, booths and so on in high schools and the mall and we also included the possibility of an information security career. Recently, Whatcom received a grant from the United States Department of Education to establish a center for border security. Part of that grant is going to cover adding an information security specialty to uh, the CIS degree. The information security specialty will include the networking courses and operating system courses that everyone in the program takes and in addition, Forensics, Network Security 1, and Network Security 2. The Forensics course will be using NK software, and this is at the request of the Bellingham Police Department. Um, hopefully, we can assist them in some of their projects. Um, they're very overwhelmed. They don't have enough help to do the Forensics part of the, uh, uh, their job. Um, network Security 2 will be a continuation of Network Security 1. And in this course, I'm going to introduce live exercises, um, such as the Red Team, Blue Team, or Capture the Flag. I also will address uh, defense in depth and legal and ethical issues. We also created a new course, Introduction to Security that we will be a core requirement for all CIS students. Everybody that's going to get a degree in computer information systems at Whatcom will have to take this course. The course is meant to be taken very early in their two-year program, with the idea being that the students are exposed to this topic at the very beginning. And as they progress through the program, uh, it's emphasized in all the courses, so we're reinforcing it with the goal that by the time they get done, it's second nature. Um, we've um, added to the, uh, our other courses a information security component so that this is also covered as operating systems and in networking. And um, with the idea that the students will get this reinforcement as they progress through the program. Okay, lessons learned. I, I really got a lot out of this um, project I did out in the community. I do have experience in IT, but I've never done a project that was uh, centered on security. I actually was very surprised at what I found at this organization. Um, one of the things uh, that happened with this project, they did not want to take all the suggestions that I made. Uh, for instance, the IT consultant did not want to implement WEP on the wireless because he said it was too much work. And um, there were other things. For instance, I set up their Windows 2003 server. I had them set up to log into the domain, but they were also still doing the peer-to-peer -peer, um, sharing, file sharing. So because the people were so used to doing whatever they wanted to do, so they rebelled. Some of them rebelled at uh, some of the things that we were implementing. So when I left, I, I said, this is about all I can do for you. And I still provided support over the phone. But they didn't follow some of my suggestions. And about three months later, I got a call, and they had been hacked. So they did start taking it a little more seriously after that. Um, but this experience, I'm able to talk about this to the students, and it gives the instructor credibility. And also, it, it puts you in touch with what's really happening out in the world. In a, in a lab environment or in a course, it's easy to talk about you know, how things should be, but actually doing it in the field, you find out how things are. And so, also the um, political part about um, getting the people to agree to use these uh, complex passwords before you start enforcing it. So those kinds of things. And I really think that this really enhanced the course. 
Um, the other point is even a small department can add information assurance to the exi existing curriculum. If you don't have the money to buy any equipment or anything like that, you can still do a, like a paper exercise. But I think with the instructor having some, some experience that they can actually bring to the class, that will be enough. Uh, the case study that I have for Network Security 1 is all on paper. Um, ethics and legal issues also need to be included. Uh, another thing I did this year, I took a law uh, class in the law of cyberspace, and it covered all the various legal issues with the Internet, and IT technicians are now being um, expected in some states to contact law enforcement if they find something on a computer they're working on that's illegal. So uh, the students need to understand that this is coming to them too. And also how to secure the machine for law enforcement. You know, what, ha what do you do if you suspect uh, something illegal has happened? So that also needs to be included in your courses. So to summarize, an energetic faculty and support from the administration are two key components for bringing information security into an existing curriculum. I'm very fortunate in that the administration at Whatcom Community College is very supportive of this. If your college is unable to fund your equipment or your curriculum, their grants are available. I funded my entire program from grants. Um, the program, we have two labs with 30 computers each, and I have a Cisco CCNA and CCNP package at, with some extra equipment. And all of that was funded from three grants that I got over the course of um, three or four years. The WEX 5 conference had many excellent ideas, especially the live exercises, and I am planning on using those in my Network Security 2 course. Um, I have the equipment to set up uh, some of the things that were demonstrated at that conference and this is what I'm planning on doing. I got quite a bit out of the WEX 5 conference. I would like to thank you for allowing me to present in this manner. Um, if you have any questions, please contact me at my email csande at whatcom.ctc dot edu. Thank you.